Hebrews 12, 18. You have not come to the place that can be touched, as Israel did, to a mountain that's crowned with blazing fire, darkness and gloom, and a windstorm, or the blast of a trumpet and a sound of a voice, a voice and a message so harsh that the people of Israel begged not to hear another word. You remember this? It's in Exodus chapter 19. It's, it's the mountain of God is just on fire, and there's lightning, and there's all this. Really, the people of God were so afraid, they didn't even want to look at it. They said, if anyone even touches that mountain, they'll be killed. Even a beast that touches that mountain will have to be killed. We're not being drawn to that one. We have a better purpose. It says in verse 21, the sight was so terrible that even Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. But instead, now we find out in verse 22, where have we come? That's it. Somebody's looking in their Bible. Hebrews 12, 22. We've come to a better place. We've come to Mount Zion. Where is that? In Jerusalem. That's the city of David. That's the place that God loves. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen? Oh, he that watches over Jerusalem never slumbers or sleeps. <laughs> no, instead, you've come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. Heavenly messengers, that would be the angels, right? A joyful feast, the assembly of the firstborn, registered as heaven's citizens. And I just feel like I should remind you that's who you are. You are citizens of a heavenly kingdom, and your name is registered with God. So you are not defeated. You are not downcast. And I just speak against it right now. If anybody's feeling weary from the battle, we just speak a charge of energy into your life right now. Because that's who we serve. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you right now. If you're feeling a little weary and you're, and you're up to it, just stand up so we can pray for you, okay? We got one person in the back. Okay, a couple more people. Stretch your hand towards the people that are standing, okay? Look, this might be the main reason why we came here today. Lord, I thank you for the courage it took to stand. Your word says, in our weakness, your strength will be perfected. So I just speak that over those here right now, that the perfection of God will fill them with, her, with your power right now, and that their weakness will turn into strength. And the Bible says now, well, we certainly sing it, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. So we ask you for uh, an injection of energy. We ask you for an injection of hope and joy to fill your people. Whatever it is that's trying to tear them down, we sever that lie in the name of Jesus. And we speak life and health. And if you're, if you're having a hard time sleeping, we just bless you with that sweet peace that comes from the Lord, that your spirit would be wrapped by God and, and allow you to get the rest and the restoration that you need. It was Elijah that was supernaturally empowered. So we just speak that over you as well. Supernatural empowerment of energy and hope and joy in Jesus' name. Be filled. Be filled. You got something? The other thing I just want to mention, uh, the Lord was speaking to me about this this morning. If you have a like if, if you've been disappointed in the Lord or hurt or upset over things, I mean, hello, <laughs> look what's been going on. But what happens is we have a tendency to get a hard heart. And that hard heart, remember the disciples were with Jesus, and when they had a hard heart, they didn't even believe it, the miracles. Jesus said, you know, is it because of your, he said, it's your hard heart that you're not believing. And a hard heart can cause unbelief. So ask the Lord, you know, where, where, where's my heart at? Do I have a hard heart? Am I, am I harboring any kind of resentment or anger in my heart towards you? Or it's not even intentional, but sometimes we just get like, you know, I'm tired of this mess. And in and, and our heart, we shut down. And so that's what hindered the disciples who hung out with Jesus, walked in unbelief. Right. So now we need to address any areas of unbelief in our heart because that right. hinders us, right? right. I mean, it happens to us all. Right. And, and constantly I'm saying, Lord, show me my heart. I don't want to have a hard heart. I don't want to hold anger or resentment in my heart towards others, right? Or, or towards, you know, family members or towards you, Lord. And it's easy. Let me tell you something. It's easy in this hour that we're in because Lord knows it's so easy to have people get on your nerves right now. <laughs> so, Lord, we just ask you, let's just pray. Yeah. 
Father, show us our heart. And Lord, if we have a hard heart, I don't want your word to ricochet off my heart. Lord, I'm asking you to remove scar tissue. Yeah. I'm asking you to remove the hardness of my heart that's not allowed your word to penetrate because I don't understand. But Lord, your word says that your, your thoughts are higher than our thoughts and your ways are not our ways. So God, we just ask you to, to break through. And Lord, we repent for having judgments, for judging people because they don't believe like us. And God, ask uh, I, Lord, we ask you to, to, to let us see people through your lens yeah. and to have your heart, not our opinion, right. but your heart, oh God. And so, Lord, we just ask you to remove the hardness of our heart. Forgive us where our opinion has overrode your word. Yes. We ask you to forgive us for that, Lord. And we thank you for your amazing love that you have for us. And you always speak truth to us because you don't want us to stay stuck. Right. So, Lord, we, we repent for doubt. We repent for weariness. We repent for unbelief. And, Lord, your word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You will supernaturally fill us with a, a strength. Your word also says in Isaiah, in our weakness, we're, we're made strong through you. Yes. And so, Lord, we just say, Lord, I feel weak. But, Lord, I thank you for an impartation of strength. I thank you today, Lord, that we repent for a hardness of heart, for anger in our heart. And, Lord, we lay it on your altar, and we ask you to come and uproot the roots. We're in agreement with you to rip up the root system of hardness of heart. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. Amen. Thank you, darling. I was thinking of uh, two parts of the Psalms. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept. And we hung our harps on the willow tree, right? But then there's another portion. After they came out of Babylon, it says, those who sow in tears reap in joy. And the song that we were taught was, take down your harps from that willow tree because it, it, it's time to sing a new song. That's what you got to do. I might be in the storm. The storm is not in me. I'm going to finish in Hebrews 12 and then one other verse. In verse 24 of Hebrews 12, in the voice, it says, You've come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant between God and humanity. You didn't come to Moses. You didn't come to that mountain that was burning with fire. You came to Jesus, who's the mediator of a new covenant, who stands before between us and the wrath that would have come against us. Jesus stands and makes us acceptable in the sight of God. Not anything we could have done, but because of the power of the substitutionary work, of what he did for us. And that blood of his sprinkled blood on the mercy seat of heaven speaks a greater word than the blood of Abel that's crying out from the earth. See that you don't turn away from the one who is speaking. That's Jesus speaking to us right now. Have faith. Don't get weary. Keep up the fight. That's what you're going to do. You're going to run this race to win and not become weary in well-doing. For the ones who heard and refused in Moses' day were punished. They weren't allowed to enter into the promised land. 